Friday Night Football has got us fired up for one hell of a raw episode. Plus, the annual Twitter question competition starts today. Happy Pride. I'm not. I'm not saying that. <laughs> so close. You're listening. You can't read. Can't write. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Can't Read, Can't Write, the podcast that proves Spartans can talk. I'm Mike Jones, joined, as always, by the guy who puts the micro in microphone, Kevin Grack, and the guy who puts the hard in could hardly be bothered, Alex Plum. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Gay! <laughs> it's the gayest month of the year. It's I can't reminder. believe you tried to get me to say that. It's a reminder, Michael, that you don't have the card that I have. That's right. You don't have it, bud. You didn't get one. You should have read the cold open then, Greg. Uh, yeah, you could have finally used your card. <laughs> I already used it in grand fashion for lots of people to hear, including future employers or, or not. <laughs> Chat GPT. My family, who I love. <laughs> Oh. For those that, that aren't picking up the pieces on this, uh, Go, Alexander, don't need to share them. why not? Why not? Why not just leave it? Wrote the cold open, and uh, we'll leave it at Ron that. Ron Burgundy'd me. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> all Caused right. me to over overpour my Sparty party that I'm ah. planning to get several Friday nights this fall. Well, we, we get. <laughs> We gotta we gotta share some inside baseball. Uh, listeners may remember that Kevin Greck was drinking uh, a Christmas ale well into the spring, and did text the group chat informing us that there was a four ninety nine six pack available. Did you one purchase? left on the shelf? Yeah. I did not. I did not. Oh, but I figured uh, I could go back tomorrow and get it there. with one hundred percent certainty. So yeah, that's right. We're working yeah. our way up. Yeah, we'll that's see. right. Well done, you. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we do want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, if we could ask a small favor, please share the pilot Spartans in your life. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And of course, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube if you want to watch at Spartan underscore pod. Uh, Plum, welcome back. What's the structure of this show? Gentlemen, we will start behind the green wall where football always leads. Friday night football, the worst possible kind of football will be discussed and dissected in great detail. We'll talk about MSU shooty hoops, and then we'll talk about our wonderful trustees who can't possibly do anything to embarrass us ever again. We'll head off Grand River for some news across the connection, and my God, there is a lot of it this week. And then, gentlemen, it is the annual Twitter question competition, and it begins tonight. I'm going to have to check the the twitter uh just because some people are flirting dangerously with losing by not regulars not submitting their questions Ooh, wow. um not good yeah i guess some well, people want to play with one arm behind the back uh-huh okay. you know we like a chip on the shoulder as spartans you know you want to be up against the wall a little bit that's so right I, I guess that's what they're doing here 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 Fortunately, uh, it's a what have you done for me lately type of competition. So yeah. this yeah. is the one to miss if you're going to miss one. That's yeah. fair. Um, and I'm saying here, Cedar Village Bagel, just so you know, this is the Twitter question competition. This is not the segment fishing competition. So tread lightly. Um, hmm. All right. Green wall football. We talked last week about two Friday games happening. Uh, there's been a third added to the mix. We got our annual tradition back of a Friday night game pre-Labor Day to kick the season off. <laughs> I would be more excited if that didn't mean that one third of our games were now... Yeah. I'm sorry, one quarter, 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 quarter of our games still were too many Friday nights. Yeah. Um, All it takes is one more Friday night, you know, for one reason or another <laughs> announcement, and it becomes a third. Um, I don't know. Plum, are you bothered by this? Someone that I, are you going to be? Were you planning on going yeah. to that game? No, of course not. But I might have been. I think my point is like whether I go to the game or I don't go to the game, I want to be able to watch the game on Saturday. I have other things I do with my Fridays. Saturday is my football day. That's the day I watch all of my football, including my 
football. When you take my football and put it on Fridays, now I don't get to do what I was going to do on my Friday. And I can't just replace that with Saturday. I'm probably going to spend more time outside or something. I, I don't know. I, I, uh, no. Plum votes no on this. I don't like it. It's too many. One, fine. Two, uh, maybe, maybe. But what are we at? Three? <sighs> Unforgivable. It's just too many. Fuck that. Hate it. Because no, think about it this week? way. Think about it this way. It's three plus the buy. It's four Saturdays. I don't get. That's a month. You don't get football time. Yeah, that's a, a month, month of Saturdays of not football. in the fall. It gets worse. There are two buys. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, that's five weeks. That's a long. That's that's in your fiscal quarter. That's your last month. Fully no football. Rough. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know who would like this. This is horseshit. There's no way to spin this as positive, by the way. So don't try. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Yeah. I mean, it, the we like the Friday to open the season. I Fine. think. It's, yeah. It's nice. You get the you get the whole next day if you're so inclined to watch a whole bunch of college football. Um, it's also Labor Day weekend, so it frees up your long weekend for a truly long weekend. But hmm. yeah. The other two. Well, let's uh, let's chat some Jonathan Smith media availability because he yeah. uh, he's good at at saying some of the right things, and uh, was asked specifically about Friday nights and said, "Well, it's great for the the conference." Is how he i I don't he didn't comment on whether he liked it for MSU, but just said that they're high profile opportunities. We chatted a bit th- a bit about that last week. Yep. And that we are not sure that we want the eyeballs uh, for, say, the Oregon game. Sure. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is that point. I think a lot of fans in the immediate wake of the announcement took it as, oh, this is a slight to MSU. We're getting relegated to Friday. But th- to that point, it is a showcase feature game mm-hmm. in that it's occupying you know, presumably primetime television on without much competition. Right. So, so everyone will get to you, see us get housed by Oregon. That's what you want. That's the, if that's we were the dream. better though, would you want these games more AP voters get to see them, right? Like if we had a better team, would you want these Friday night games? I think that's maybe a more interesting conversation than hmm. Whatever we were doing. That is a better conversation, but I still don't give a fuck because I want my nostalgia. Yeah. That's the whole point. I think it's a fair response. Yeah. I mean, it it is, though. And it's one that we're losing track of all the time. The nostalgia is getting chipped away over and over and over again. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And as we've discussed, nostalgia is the basis of college (laughs) athletics. (laughs) That's it. So that's it. Yeah. I have to agree. uh, So. Uh, Plum, you, uh, Smith was asked about in particular, the, yeah. uh, you know, transfers back and forth. I, I, I want to extend a little context for folks. Uh, so he was, he was asked specifically about Mangum, uh, transferring to U of M and, uh, Bridgman transferring to MSU, the, the Wolverine that's coming our way. Mm-hmm. Um, this was in about eight and a half minutes of media availability, wherein at the end he's like, Hey, I got to go to work now. Like, cause he was at a camp. So I don't know how Polished. much he was. Right. Yeah, but so anyway, he, I'll let you take it from there. He was asked about these rivalry transfers twice, actually. Uh, and and what were your thoughts? Yeah. I, what did he say? What were your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think what he said was something like, uh, you know, this is just what it is now. Uh, this is what the portal's done. Guys want opportunities. They're going to find them where they can. Portal enables that. I mean, it was just sort of like a statement of fact. It was completely value neutral. Um, and I, I think this is, I think your, your tee up to this, Michael, probably does the most grace giving that anyone can do to that response, which is he was not prepared for it. And he gave the most objective non answer answer he could. Uh, my immediate response is horseshit. You know, I think I don't love that answer. I think I want him to say, yeah, this is going to be tricky. Uh, I think everyone on our team looks at guys who leave us to go to Michigan and say, 
or should be thinking. I mean, I, I, he probably can't say what his team should or should not be thinking, but I, it's some acknowledgement that like they are our rival and us pulling a guy out of the portal who played at Michigan. You know, we got to figure that out. We, we, we're, we're light in some position areas. We need to get depth. We've got guys who we're going to source from wherever because we're agnostic to it. But I know for the fans, this is going to be weird. And I, and we've heard it because they even they, in the question, she's like, you got a lot of fans pretty, pretty upset is sort of not to acknowledge that I think misses an opportunity to just, and I'll say, and I, you know, again, this is something that Mark Antonio would not have lost an opportunity to just run up the scoreboard a little bit. And I'll say even to Mel Tucker's Mel would have been able to probably hit the nail on the head here a little bit firmer too. And that's, that was one of the few things that I think he kind of got uh, probably right. But so Jonathan Smith sort of missed this one pretty bad. I, yeah. Jonesy I, I role play me. Imagine well, Mark D'Antonio still the head coach gets that question. What do you think Mark says in that situation? Well, in that situation, I don't think we have Samaj Brid- Bridgman on our team. Mm-hmm. First, There's no, mm-hmm. there it is. Um, We're not pulling him out of the portal. That's right. Uh, or, or, you know, D'Antonio probably would, would think for a second. I think he might smile and say, well, we got to rescue one person. Mm. And, the reframe. Uh, the reframe. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, you know, the second time uh, Smith was asked about this particular situation within that eight minute conversation, he did. He quickly said, I don't mean to diminish rivalries. He was asked in the context of the House settlement Mm. and did express hope that some of the consequence of all of this is, I took it as limited movement um, and as in fewer transfers or transfer opportunities. Quick to say, not that that would apply to rivals or something, you know, there's not going to be a rivalry cap on it. It just, we might see less movement, I think was the implication of what he was saying. But I'm with you, Plum. You know, he's, he hasn't played a game yet. That's right. Uh, and, you know, the, he's, he's seen chatting with Sharon more. We do have a bit of a reset, maybe thankfully on the rivalry and that we have two new coaches, same year, same side, you know, at both schools. But um, it feels like maybe he hasn't quite heard how much we hate that school yet. Yeah. Yeah. He should have. Um, he'll learn, he'll <laughs> learn why very quickly. I, so there were a couple other things that I, I thought were noteworthy about uh, the the few questions he was able to answer. He was asked about the recruitment of kids and how NIL factors into it, and you know, it seemed very realistic that NIL is is a relevant and prevalent talking point in recruitment. But did say that we essentially we're not interested in anyone for whom NIL is the exclusive reason that they're picking a school that connection to the the team, the scheme, the coaches, the place, the school that they're going, the education they're going to be receiving. And of course, NIL is a component of this, it's but like, yeah. um, but I thought that was an interesting, and I, I don't think we would have heard something like that from Mel Tucker, mm-hmm. um, in mm-hmm. fairness, that, that feels more like if D'Antonio had come later on in life, something that he would have said, um, which was, I thought, nice. Yep. Um, chatted about walk-ons being eliminated or potentially eliminated. Was not a fan of that. Of course, Jonathan Smith, famously a walk-on quarterback himself. Yep. State. Um, la- sounds like they may be adding one additional player from the portal, um, which was kind of interesting because I think they have four to five open scholarships. Uh, so just said, said flatly that there's potentially one additional addition. Uh, that's too many additions. Um, but um, and then last talked about recruiting as the lifeblood of a program is not the phrase he would use anymore. Mm. Um, that instead it is player acquisition is the lifeblood. Of the mm. program. Um, there it is. Quiet part out loud. Yeah. Well, it prefers to build through that? high school in a brand binder. Can you, yeah, well that, or on like a sticky note and leave it on Tom Mizzo's desk or something like God that. Can us. we, is there some way that we can get that? message over to this game it's, it's to the, not gonna happen to we just, center. we've got to stop decrying it it's never gonna fucking happen just let it go 
I Happy understand Father's Tom Izzo just took two transfers in the portal, but it felt like pulling teeth. <laughs> and it was. Yes. <laughs> it was. It literally That's was. wild palm from you said everything. And it, it was. It was. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, two other notes, programming notes about football. One, we are in official visit season. MSU, I think, had 14 kids on campus this week, which is – uh, relevant in that it's the first week of official visit season. Mm -hmm. So the the conventional wisdom, you want to go first or last. Um, something I heard, uh, I forget where, was that the, there's some thought with the, the capping of the um, the official visit window that actually second to last may be the real last, which is just an interesting aside. So you'd be seeing mm -hmm. kids canceling some of their final visits. Um, so... MSU's primed with with a handful of folks that they seem really high on, but we don't talk about those people just other than to say that it's a busy time of year for MSU, and hopefully we'll have some commits to talk about soon. Um, and we won't talk about them until they transfer out of the program and then back in again. Or what is, what's the rule, Paul? That's the rule. Yeah. That's the rule. Okay. Through, out, Understood. out, and back in. Revolving portal door. Yes. Uh, Understood. And, and then announced today, a Mel Tucker tradition is continuing. Uh, Spartan Dog Con, the event that brought former MSU players back onto campus, is continuing. Might be his in interesting Mel Tucker legacy. I don't think it's the it, I, it's probably the brainchild of Darian Harris, but I don't think it was a terrible idea, and I'm kind of right. glad to see that it's continuing. Mm. Yeah, um, that connection to the past, if you have the right coach, I think is pretty important um, for establishing culture and laying the groundwork moving forward. It's going to be an awkward first year for some of those guys. <laughs> like, Oh, Hey, <laughs> Jonathan Smith, huh? My coach's name was John Smith. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's good. Um, all right. Uh, let's, let's chat a, a tiny bit. M MSU men's hoops. Um, first, no news. No coach. Still nothing. <laughs> Definitely we're expecting to have this weeks ago at this point. So mm -hmm. also Graham threw a little cold water on the Saudi Washington stuff. Not a, not mm -hmm. a lot. Just, just a little drip, drip, drip of like, it's not crazy that Saudi would have been around Tom Izzo. Mm -hmm. So makes you wonder if it's not him, then who? Truly, then who? Um, on uh, this topic, should we talk about how we got dressed down by Joe Ashworth for <laughs> for last? I week? was going to save it for Twitter questions, but yeah, it, folks, we've Joe. We hate to dox you, but we've learned that Joe is uh, actually an agent <laughs> for coaches. Specifically, he has one client, and it's Tum Tum Naren. I was going to go with Tum Tum's mom. Uh, Joe Ashworth's <laughs> real name is Mrs. Naren. <laughs> No, I, I thought it was, uh, we appreciate pointed feedback on the podcast, right? Sure. And I thought he had a few good points in there. And the truth is, we can't evaluate Tum Tum as a coach, and that's true. Though I would suggest that probably most people can't, um, whichever side you're on here. So maybe it's a little bit unfair for how hard we were on Tum Tum, although I think it was not that hard although i did suggest that he was more of a more of a i guess cheerleader than he was a uh than he was a, a like an actual like player on the team in terms of his leadership it was like and maybe that's a little unfair i just remember watching every game of his career and i remember feeling okay when he handed the reins off um maybe though i should just be gracious for him being willing to do that or I should be grateful that he was so gracious and willing to do that. And also it occurred to me this week, maybe there is something to it when he was able to keep Miles Bridges looking like a Boy Scout in his time on campus. Maybe there is something here there it is. that we should give Tum Tum some credit for. So Joe, appreciate the feedback. Um, Jonesy, you've, you've got a look about you over there. Oh, I... I stand by, I, I, I said it in jest, but I'm going to say it again. I think 
Tom Izzo would rather win a national championship and have cancer <sighs> than say, at least I don't have cancer after losing a national championship. I, I don't think that's hyperbole. <laughs> like, I, I think that dude is that competitive. Um, and so there's just something about Tom Tom. Now, if, if you had to ask me, who would I rather have, Tom Tom or Josh Langford? I pick Tom Tom every day of the week to be sure. coaching the team. Yes. But um, I just. He's winsome. There's <laughs> something about his. Uh, I don't know. He was a tenacious defender. I just don't understand his competitive bone. Yeah. In the way that I understand it from play, people like Tom or um, uh, uh, Draymond, right? Like Mateen Cleaves, even like I, I, I can understand the competitive bone in those guys. I, I don't yeah. see it in Tom Tom. All right. But you know, uh, other news uh, we've, Got a lot of fun workout clips. Speaking of uh, alums, Jaron Jackson working out with Xavier Booker. Yeah, that's kind of fun to see. Um, we've got. Who does Carson. look like he's put a couple pounds on? By the way, good. Yeah, he did look legitimately. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got Carson Cooper working out with Seisman, our, uh, our new center. Seisman, 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 Seisman. And I think Fears has been working out with Frankie Fiddler, maybe, or it's who Kohler is here Fiddler? in East Lansing. Frankie ah. Fiddler's here on campus now, so right. we like that. Oh yeah, yesterday at the field Fiddler house. on the roof, very picking very up, no, picking up for others, carrying the torch, carrying the torch at the field house. He, That's what I he heard. saw everyone at the field house, and he said, "No, I got to go to the roof. Let's go to El, uh, LS Teco." Uh, and he hopped right over. Um. All right, well, uh, that's our MSU Hoops. We got to chat a little bit news as it relates to the MSU trustees because it's been a minute since we reminded people yes. that um, you can suck. and should write to your representatives, including Governor Whitmer, reminding her that it is within her authority to remove trustees because – the Lansing State Journal published an article that says uh, MSU has spent over $2 million investigating trustee misconduct and bullying, specifically as it relates to Rima Basser and Dennis Denno. Uh, of that $2 million, over 325000 of it is on representation for Vassar and Denno. So the university is shelling out for their representation. Um, presumably because they're acting in their public capacity, which is wild. Um, Inexplicable. It, 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 like, it, it's, it's, it's bad for taxpayers. It's yep. bad for alumni. Like, it, it's bad on every level. I understand Can what you the university is paying. It's, it's crazy from a $325,000, but... Can you imagine if you're Vassar or Deno not having the just shame not being like it's time for me to step away this is ridiculous like if you're dennis denno perhaps the stupidest person on the planet uh, it's been suggested like what is it that you could possibly think you offer the university that is truly. worth the humiliation that's truly. worth the capital expense that's worth all of these things because all of a sudden you've gotten very interested in this you know ethnicity that you apply to but the students from that group don't trust you so what are we doing what are you doing you offer truly nothing at all more to the point he's all they've only i mean the thing the most embarrassing thing here was the university's paid nine or ten thousand dollars to some firm in royal oak for retaining fees they've not billed the university for anything in other words he's just spending money to have attorneys on standby they're not actually doing anything for him I uh, huh. um I did just look it up, but by the way, uh, uh Science of the Magazine, um Dennis Dano is the stupidest person on earth. <laughs> so that's from science this this quarterly publication of scientific mm -hmm. fact. It uh, ranks quarterly www.science.org, a peer reviewed <laughs> journal, um also yeah. known as Science the Magazine. So uh, you can find it. I think that uh, was the uh, cover story uh, for, for that issue was, as well. Uh, hashtag Deno is a dumbass. Uh, 
It'd be Started. a real shame if yeah, <laughs> if that yeah, anyway. caught on. The thing is, I God, I hope that law firm doesn't it. start suing uh, for the libel. You know, oh, or I, I, slander. Pro- is this slander? Prove he's not stupid. That's true. That's kind he of deleted funny. all of his te- text messages, which does indeed make you a dumbass. Not if he was hiding something. <laughs> not if he was hiding something. All right. Good. Well done, you. Uh, Here's a segment, fish. If you can oh. think, dear listeners, of one reason, one mm-hmm. legitimate reason why Dennis Denno or Rima Vassar, for that matter, should remain university trustees, we'd love to hear it. Bring it to us. Um, comment the on meantime, the YouTube channel. If you can't, also comment on the YouTube channel that you cannot. And then hashtag the meantime, Denno's dumbass. In the Everyone meantime, reach out to your yeah, reach out to the elected governor, representation. Go camp out at, outside of her Mackinac Island mansion. Yeah, make Don't your shark tank pitch something about how you can offer better trustees uh, yeah, to literally Michigan State University and thus the taxpayers of the state of Michigan. How the uh, grown adult men who are playing Fort on historic Fort Michelin Mackinac would any of them just randomly be better <laughs> just trustees take one back than on Dennis the ferry Dino. with you? <laughs> just make that case. She'll understand. Uh, gentlemen, I have friends that live in Albion. Albion mm-hmm. College, located in Albion, Michigan. Do you know what's about equidistance between Albion, where they live, and Ypsilanti, where I work? No. Pray tell. Clear Lake. Clear Lake. Mm. Grass Lake. Grass Lake. Grass Lake, lake and yeah. Clear Lake. The two lakes, grassy and clear, are roughly equidistant. If anyone's looking this up on a map, don't, because I haven't verified this and I don't want to. But I suggested to them. We don't see enough of each other. Why not have dinner one weeknight at no. a restaurant if we could find one? Maybe the fi- choose the finest restaurant, I think. In the Clear Lake, you know, Clear Lake Grass Lake region. Yeah. As it were. So we went to a map and started searching for where that could be. Yeah. It turns out we found it. Yeah. What is it? Tell me Mama's, about this place. Mama's Mama's mercantile, mercantile, <laughs> and eatery, and eatery. That was more dangerous than you know. Landed I, that one. I was, I was uh, trying Landed to pull it up for you with a, with a lot of help. It does say it here, but for some reason in my mind, it was like what it used to be. And I was like, have we not updated the coffee? It's possible we haven't updated the coffee. Uh, anyway, mama's anyway, mer- tell me, mama's mercantile and eatery. We've eaten there before, boys. We've eaten there before. And We've been there before. We've seen multiple it. Yeah. times. Excellent cocktails, uh, fantastic dishes. There's always a special on the menu. Uh, we've had the brisket. We've had the burgers. We've had the pizzas. Uh, I'm here. I'm told they have a pretty fine weekend brunch. Not been there uh, for that yet. That's just a yet. So anyway, mm-hmm. highly recommend. Can't wait to get my Albion friends, Joel and Aaron, out to Mama's Mercantile with me. And that will hey, be fun. Plum, when the bill comes from your, you know, amazing dinner that you've had with Joel and Aaron, is there a yes. way to maybe shave 10% off that thing? Do you know? Yeah. You tell him Alex Plum sent you and is going to give you the gay guy special. <laughs> and you just scream gay and you get 10% off your bill. So if, if that's the way to do it. You also <laughs> want to mention can't read, can't write. That's an alternate way to save 10 (laughs) percent all right fine you can try that maybe you don't want to appropriate you know is is the situation or maybe you are just Mm -hmm. very gay and that's just how you say it hurtful (laughs) i wasn't in that how all right uh should we head off grand river yes let us yes all right let's start light uh, let's start with Simeon Barrow. Oh, light! A, a, a young man's life seems to be over. Let's start with that. <laughs> That's a shame. Simeon Barrow, a cautionary tale. Oh, uh, stupid. For those who don't know, Simeon Barrow committed to the University of Miami, uh, matriculated, and As seemingly 
the check hasn't cleared. Oh, uh, wait, wasn't look- there a flirtation with LSU before the commitment to Miami and I the matriculation right. to Miami? I think that's right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's looking to leave again and may indeed leave. Aww. Uh Notwithstanding the matriculation matter. Um, so things are dicey over there. And that's a shame. That's a real shame. On one hand, it's not it over. Is, He's fine. Yeah, he'll probably land somewhere. I mean, it, it, on one hand, it is really bumming me out that this happens to kids. On the other hand, uh-huh. it's a nice little thing for the staff to be able to just like, hey, oh, you want to hit the transfer portal? Maybe you Google Simeon Barrow before you do that. Remember yeah. him? Remember our guy Simeon? Um, it's it's good to have one on the um you know that they can see it's tangible to them yeah you know yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you need one every four years just to remind people i mean uh, this is what happens this is not there is again where is the uh there's no relational cap collateral here right there's no goodwill built up there's no correct you know for for a tiny day you know i, I that that's what's lacking in all of this. And if this is a race to the bottom, schools owe you nothing. They don't owe you anything because you owe no one anything either. You're running to whatever extra zero right. you can get at the end of your paycheck. So why the fuck wouldn't they cut and slice and dice whatever they can to get as much value out of the checks they're writing? I mean, this this is the gag. So if you you want to play the game, you know what you don't get is a union. I mean, I, frankly, and I guess maybe that's the next frontier, which I don't even want us to get into tonight, but. I don't know, at some point, like, there's got to be, they're going to be looking for some kind of protection, but I, at some point, you owe someone something. You can't just keep fucking running. So, hate to see it, love to see it. Not to undermine you here on this plum, but mm-hmm. I believe, and educate me on this if I'm wrong, I believe the schools do still owe these guys something. I think the Big Ten still has committed four years of, of uh, scholarship time mm-hmm. to anyone that they offer a scholarship to. So there is actually the, the schools do have something in the game there. It is yeah. not as transactional as it as is it for be. the student athletes. Yeah. It's, but I could be mistaken on that. So no, someone no, reach I think out to that, me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Good, good question. Okay. Um, all right. Let's do house part de. Um, ah, yes. Very good. So last week we talked extensively about house v NCAA. Uh, and the the settlement that's being proposed to the judge, uh, we left a few outstanding topics to discuss. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a couple additional points as to what this might mean for MSU, yeah. uh, what this means for smaller institutions, future lit- litigation, and an open question about should football still uh, count. Um, so, uh, Greg. Let's start uh, in uh, and, and Plum, sorry, uh, on what this might mean for MSU. I know we covered this to a degree last time, uh, but yeah. I think there was some stuff that we left out. So, you know, uh, we we know this has been planned for, right? Like, it, it seems like Haller has already been talked about this pre-house settlement with with Couch the other day. Correct. Yes. And we all we really know about this is that as far as his tenure, he's not expecting to diminish the number of schools or the number of sports that MSU is supporting. So we have that. I think the expectation would be that they're going to onboard some additional staff for this. We haven't heard anything about uh, Sparty NIL or whatever it's called taking over the uh the like technical parts of this so i would expect the athletic department is planning to do that themselves um and an interesting thing and uh, that we've seen at other schools that we haven't yet seen at msu is reduction in current you know headcount as a result of that so i think it was texas a&m or someone similar that did reduce headcount in the athletic department citing these types of upcoming changes yeah um so we haven't seen that so far to date here um nor 
nor would we expect to see in the immediate term a reduction in the total number of sports that are being supported. Um, so this will continue to be outstanding. We'll we'll kind of like understand this better as things go on and the settlement takes place. And then as we get into 2026 and we start actually paying these uh, the uh, the revenue shares out. Um, but for the moment, it looks like overall MSU has a plan for it. And we're not immediately reducing the number of supported sports, which I don't think will be the case in all institutions, as I guess we'll get to here in just a moment. But uh, Jonesy, was there anything else that I missed there that you were expecting me to cover? Uh, no, and I, I just I just don't remember if we talked about last week for MSU in particular, what the percentage of budget all of this means. We did. Uh, yeah, we did. It's like one percent. One and a half percent, something like of that. Of the university's total budget, right? Yes. Correct. Um, so, all right, great. Uh, as for smaller schools, though, this gets a little interesting um, because, as we mentioned last week, they're on the hook in, in terms of uh, back pay, if you will, uh, $900 million. That largely seems to be financed out of their future NCAA tournament revenues. But um, the <sighs> but that uh, means that that money that the bean counters over those institutions expected to come in those years no longer arriving at the door. And, and it, 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 well, it, it, not only that, but the. <sighs> The, many of these schools are already not many, almost all of them, if not all of them, are operating at a revenue deficit. The mm -hmm. university is funding most power four schools. Frankly, are operating probably at a deficit. So mm -hmm. uh, the the university's funding for these non P four schools, their athletics department. So this is coming out of educational coffers ultimately as well. So. Or there's like a stated line item in your tuition, really, <laughs> for subsidizing these types of activities. So those numbers will get bigger if they keep the same number of of student athletes that they are right now. Yeah. This is wildly going to drive tuition up. <laughs> this is this is ultimately going to cost. Like somehow we're all going to end up paying more for this uh, to exist. Um, so. But what's it, so you have a note on here about that they're toast. Um, that, that like how how can these schools possibly continue to exist? And I think that's a fair call out. But I guess I would ask back to you: How can the Power Four afford for them to not exist? Because they need those games. Is that what you're saying? They pay a lot of money for those games to happen. A lot of money. They would rather pay Central over a million dollars to come cheat on behalf of U of M here right. than play a Power 5 school yeah. for, for multiple weeks. But that's, okay, but that's the result of how scheduling was rewarded in previous years, where you want those wins. You're basically paying a million dollars to have that win on the schedule, and did not have a team that can go beat you up. If things change in college football, where it's not the end of the world, if you lose a game or two, those types of games can change. They can go away. Look at other professional leagues. It's not like, it, it's not like they're, you know, the NBA wants to play G league teams early on in the season to, sure. uh, to beat up on them and uh, just get those W's. Like it, this can all work itself out in the long run, especially with bigger conferences where those could be real games against real competition. And, you know, teams that get into the 16 or 24 game or team playoff, whatever it ends up being someday, will have maybe like a nine and three record at that point instead of needing to go 12 and 0 in order to make a national championship game. All right, let me be a cynic, though, for a second. Let's assume that the SEC doesn't do that. Okay, okay. the SEC continues to 
to play weak non-conference, like borderline FCS to FCS teams. Um, and, but the SEC is the SEC, right? So they, yeah. you know, they get the SEC cred. Everyone else decides to partake in this gauntlet you're proposing. Yep. Do you think a 12 and 0 Georgia and 11 and 1 Bama are not getting, I'm not saying not being left out, but I'm talking like top seed yeah. against yeah, a, I mean, against a big 10 that went through a more competitive gauntlet against a, an Ohio state that dropped a game or two, but against exclusively high end programs. I think it depends on how committed the committee that is going to set up the, uh, the postseason is to rewarding playing those types of games. And I think probably the big 10 doesn't do this that the sec doesn't do it. Like it would take the commitment of both of the yeah. big two major conferences for that to happen. And also when I say that the smaller schools are toast, I don't think that, that like football is going to go away necessarily at Eastern or Western or whatever. I think more likely they're going to break away from maybe yeah. the power four conferences and look like something closer to what D2 is now as a result of all of this. So th that's what I meant by their toast. Their toast in the current format is what I meant by that. There is another solution. And What's it's that? one that's being explored by power four schools at the nonce. Private equity. Mm. So we would be remiss to not mention that several institutions, not the least of which is Florida State, are flirting with, engaged with private equity in their athletic departments. Um, that feels like a hellscape that I don't want to imagine, because if we think that the networks are bad, yeah, private equity will be worse. That might be when I'm done with college football. Yeah, if that's it. Some private equity firm shows private up at capital. MSU. Yeah. Whatever it is, I don't care. Um, that might be it. That might be where I get off of this whole carousel. Because if you're Florida State, okay, you become flush with cash. Fantastic. Right. right. What's the back end of this look like? You yeah. you don't does Florida State football go public at some point? You can buy stock in a college football stock exchange in in florida state and private equity gets their investment back like what it, does the school buy the private equity firm out on that do the boot like truly what is the end game once private equity gets in the door i understand what it starts out with I'm interested in what happens down the road because it's a because... deal. With, it, it is it is as analogous to a real life deal with the devil as can exist. Mm -hmm. You get something, but you are not coming out ahead in this transaction. Mm. No, right? Like that's that's they're the going to get their pound of hush how... and more. Yeah, right. That's not how it works. That's not how equity works. Right. The the idea though, Greg, <laughs> weirdly. The idea of ownership in a team is actually quite interesting to me, only in that there is an analogous NFL team that operates in that space. Yeah, you think private equity is going to go the Green Bay route where they're just happy to have their, no. little, their little piece of paper? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not talking private equity. I'm actually talking about uh, a mode and mechanism of preventing this from happening. Oh. The idea that if you could distribute ownership to people who are like, we've talked extensively about nostalgia being the whole vessel for this working, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the love of alma mater. Well, what if you sold ownership? You're, you're saying we could buy the Green Bay piece of paper that just says, hi, hi, I've got a piece of the team. I count. I'm real. Kevin, it, Look at me. Kevin, let me, let I me ask you this. I demand to be taken seriously. Hey, man, if, if ultimately that meant that you could stop PE from coming in, 
that meant that you could have some dumb little voice in preventing maybe some seismic shifts or at least be an informed voter on it. And mm. your university could fundraise off of this in a substantial way. And that you could ensure that generation after generation, this, the, the team is taken care of. Would you not be interested in buying that? This is a model that's existed for decades and no college team has tried it. I have to imagine that there's a reason for that. And it's because you just can't, I don't think it's not a private entity. Like you can't, what are you going to, you can't IPO. Sure. Like, but if it ever broke off, if it ever broke off, I would be encouraged if MSU pursued some sort of democratization of ownership. You're talking about the eventuality that we've discussed where it's really just part of the the university in name only. And it's like professional football being played on On campus. campus. These guys basically are not students. There probably aren't graduation requirements. There, there may be, maybe not in school. You're talking about in that situation about selling certificates. I think in that situation, I might not have much interest in buying a certificate. If I'm completely honest with you. Sure. I think I might start Uh, rooting for Western at that point. That'll sure. look more like college football as I understood it and growing up with it. And that might feel very, very pearl clutchy to our player empowerment folks. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that they don't deserve their peace. They absolutely do. I'm saying that this is no longer college football and it no longer resembles why the three of us choose to do this every Sunday, Monday, whatever it is. That whatever we, actually day we, record we choose to. Uh, yeah. Plum, Plum, I want to get to you on the loophole, uh, but I, I do just want to flag one other thing, which is that the SEC is exploring adding logos to the field and jerseys. Um, you know, you, Greg, you mentioned earlier that uh, staff cuts. It seems like Haller probably doesn't want to cut staff, doesn't want to cut sports, mm-hmm. but you got to find the money somewhere. Um, so it we could be looking up at looking at kits that are a little kitted up, uh, if you will, uh, in, in the coming time or selling, you know, we, we've often thought would the field be named after say Mark D'Antonio, um, that feels like maybe it's, if it doesn't or get named sooner rather than later, maybe the golf coach. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to come in. <laughs> 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 the Lupe Izzo football Lupe field. Lupe Izzo football field. Uh, so with all, so we've talked about small schools. Uh, we've talked about big schools. The the big ones in particular, though, Plum, they've been exploring a loophole. Can you tell with it, within seconds of signing off on this settlement, they seem to have found a loophole? What what's the story here? Well, effectively, it doesn't. It uh, so there's the the settlement has a cap. What is it? Twenty million or twenty two million or something is what they're kind of banding about yep. right now per school. And then it escalates um, every year, um, right? And what they can pay student athletes to twenty two million. That's a lot of money, obviously, but it doesn't forbid the collectives from still being able or other third party outside entities from being able to work with the schools and directly with the students. On name, image, and likeness, you could have Al's dealership still offer your power forward Michael Jones fifty thousand dollars. Power forward? <laughs> oh yeah, look at him! Look at him! Guard. Well, it's because he's he's no. so muscular right now. It's, That's he's why so, he's, he's my power so little guy. Fit. Mm-hmm. He's a fit throwing that power, those power pecs around. Power one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, damn it. Got to tune into the broadcast to see that one, dear listeners. Um, But anyway, so that can still happen. And those dollars, whatever they are, however they're spent on these, you know, quote unquote NIL issues, don't count toward the uh, cap. And so that's a that's a pretty sizable loophole. And so if if the settlement was intended in some ways to uh, restrict the work of these NIL collectives so that there can be greater parity in the schools, you know, that has not certainly been achieved here. And. Not to mean you still have states like you got your Missouri's, you got your Florida's, you got your Texas's, and other states where the NIL laws are much, much more. Well, sorry, I guess it's really just Missouri, but just incredibly progressive. So there's more that can be done in a lot of these states around this NIL work that 
you know, in terms of how they collaborate with the schools specifically than other states have. So you've got varying and to some extent, very, you know, wide berths of, of, of disparity state to state and program to program in terms of how these collectives work. So they're not going anywhere and uh, how this all ends up playing out is going to be quite interesting to see. All right. So let's talk uh, briefly about future litigation um, because this is we've described and, and other folks have described this as a watershed case. Uh, it certainly is altering the, the landscape of college football, but does it provide certainty? And it, mm-hmm. Jonathan Smith, even in his eight minutes of conversation, expressed hope that it would settle some things. I have news. <laughs> it won't. So there's one case out there, and and hopefully by the time we publish this, this hasn't literally changed. But Fontenot is, I believe, how it's pronounced, uh, the NCAA, is a case about nearly an identical matter. And the only reason it's worth bringing up is that it potentially adds in another lump of damages because the last time, so there were, the House v. NCAA case was actually three consolidated cases, and there was an ask on behalf of plaintiffs to consolidate the Fontenot case with the House case, and the judge judge denied it. So with that that means there could be an entire separate case that's being litigated mm. in its own right with an extra set of damages that needs to be resolved. So there's that. Um, other lawsuits. Uh, there's oh, an Japan? artificial, yeah, there's an artificial cap on your ability to earn name, image, and likeness while playing on behalf of a college because there is a cap on your eligibility. And you might say, well, it's tied to your academic time in school, except it's not because you can have grad students. So, so long as you're pursuing a degree, a degree, why can't you participate in NCAA sports? Doesn't really make any sense. Uh, so, we could see potentially that you need to be pursuing an undergraduate degree as as a consequence of all of this. Um, I think the bigger issue, though, is the settlement itself. So. Uh, let's see here. Um, anyone who opts this, so you have to opt into this class. People can opt out of it. That includes future high school students who can opt out of the settlement agreement. Anyone who's from before 2016 could potentially raise a claim. Uh, anyone who plays just next year, because we said this goes into effect in 2025. So anyone who play like a one and done in basketball would be able to raise their own separate claim. Um, and then there will be litigation about the payouts. We touched on this, I think decently last week, but there's an issue of paying student athletes. It's either you pay them equally and comply with title nine, or you pay them unequally and comply with the idea of a fair market value. Either way, you're going to get sued. Uh, yeah, and then that's the point. The Tennessee, like it truly, <laughs> it, the point. It, it, <laughs> I mean, what's, just, what's at this point, like, just stop, just don't pay anyone anything. <laughs> just everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I, yeah, it, like I, I'm so, curious. Uh, for the, our like, there will be a there will be another major case. It will sure, either be yeah. a major Title IX case or a major strike to Title IX, and that right. can't be underscored enough. Yeah. So we talked last week about That's should football coming. even even count for Title IX anymore? If these guys are getting paid and they're getting you know, right. revenue shares and all that stuff, uh, I'm curious, Plum, if if eligibility rules go away. And there start to be guys on the MSU football team for nine years. Not the way that we like joke, but like take the COVID year and and extend it out ad infinium. Yep. Would that affect your fandom? Would that affect your appreciation if if someone that you really like not if it's Kenneth Walker? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the problem. It's not. It's, it's going to be like that's exactly it's Cal Halliday's. Yeah, it's Cal yes. Halliday. That's right. It's going to be someone that's just good enough to stick around forever, but yep. not good enough to go do and, something else and bring no fucking value. That's it. Yeah. Or you Matt no. Coughlin. Well, I mean, I guess at yeah. that point, like if they're not. Oh, my I mean, this God. Is where Kickers it, will be 42. That, in, the, that's, in college so football. It's, it, you're going to have selection and quarterbacks and quarterbacks. It's going to be it's going to be by Connor position Cook. group. 
Connor Cook yeah. could come back and be Brian our, our quarterback after after Aiden Childs. He could come back and be the quarterback after that. Like, well, so there, it's there's just a wild stuff. Yeah, there's a question there, isn't there? I mean, you would think in some level, like the market would be able to control for that. Like, oh, we don't want the do old you, guy, or you know, do high schoolers have a lawsuit. Oh, like I don't know. Yeah, right. I, I, right, like I can't play football anymore. Right, you've you've not given me a path to it. Huh. Then the NFL dries up by the by. Because high school kids can't get in. Like, why would you take a? Wait. You're saying the high school kids then then sue the schools because the the path is gone, or you're saying now yeah, high they, school kids can't do anything. How many how many schools are going to replace Brian Lewerke with a freshman out of high school? Right. Yeah. Well, but how many are doing that right now? But the only thing that makes it happen is that Brian Lewerke has to leave. Yeah, he has to go. He has to walk out the door. Well, no. I mean, you could have a backup situation. Right? But but if Brian Lewerke doesn't have to leave, then yeah. like... Yeah, but by the time he's 40-something, it's, it's, you know... Uh, what right, but then there's the new... By the time he's 28. The, and right. If instead of being one of the Michigan Panthers' three quarterbacks that just get carouseled in and out really nilly, because uh, Aiden Childs is going to make something like fifteen times more money then, than yeah. Ryan Lewerke is this year to play football. Yeah, like yeah. So what happens? What happens when there's just nowhere for? The high school kids to go as a result, I guess, maybe. Yeah. I guess maybe Western, Central, Eastern get way right. better. The maybe. Mac gets way better dudes. I don't know. Uh, last All piece right. of litigation that's still being, still being discussed is that the Tennessee <laughs> oh, Attorney General is still pushing forward with a lawsuit against the NCAA for... Prohibit prohibitions on anything related to recruitment and NIL. That is to say that Tennessee wants to be able to drop the McDonald's bag of cash in front of whomever they'd like without fear of retribution. So what are the, what, what's stopping them now? What, like truly where are the guardrails right now? Right. They don't exist. It just got opened I, up so that schools can do it directly. There's nothing stopping anyone in NIL anything. I guess it, it codifies it. It makes it official. I guess. But like, where are the guardrails right now? I don't think there are any at this time. Especially now with the house settlement where schools can get directly Ooh. involved at the, at the NIL. All right. Actually, fine. Let's assume that you can secure a ruling that's somehow uh, Tennessee specific. Then you would just say anyone who wants to go to Tennessee just opt out of the class because we'll pay you more. Like, hmm. we'll pay. And and by the by, the, the settlement has a fair market value cap on it. Hmm. Hmm. But there's the still the means. loophole. There's yeah. still the loophole that Plum talked about. And that happens yeah. in one way or another. So, yeah. I mean, I know this is for Rocky Top, but it's funnier for me if this is about Vanderbilt. Um, so I, I think the Commodores are going to get their, their guys paid one way or another. I'm not sure that that really matters. As long as they got a field house, they'll be fine. Um, that was, all right. That was a, a joke. That was a joke. Yeah, anything else? Home home guards expense. No, which, uh, we'll I do have it. See, I do have this on here. Athletes on foreign visas. They basically can't participate in any of this because it's a stole my job situation. Um, Zach Eady complained about this a lot over the course of the year because he's from Canada. Um, we, didn't, we didn't talk about it because we didn't care about Zach Eady, and I'm not talking about it now because I don't care about foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Oh boy. Let me just have that on the radar. And I, I, I thought can't I was going to get last time. I thought I was going to get in trouble for the cold open. No, nope. <laughs> you though. <laughs> Rocking with that. You're safe. Turns uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do these Twitter questions. I'm gonna go grab a beer. Uh, you guys get us rocking and rolling. And before we, maybe, maybe you can chat for a second about how 
Plum, can you recap the rules around the Twitter question competition? Yeah, and recap all the, of the rules that have been set. Yeah, plug yeah, the email address, please. The email address from the email. Yeah, what is the email address? Uh, can't, can't read, can't, can't write. write 1855, 1855 at gmail.com. 1855 at gmail.com. That's right. Can't read, can't write 1855, the year of our university's founding, at gmail.com. Um, the, the rules are not that complicated. Uh, if if you have paid attention at all in any of the last four weeks, you should have memorized them by now. Uh, they are simple, as simple as they are in AIN. Uh, the rules are there are no rules. And you ask questions, and we apply a absurd, largely anachronistic, deeply offensive, immoral in many respects, and wildly inconsistent uh, set of um Values and perspectives, I guess, to rank order them. And the rank ordering is done by one of us. Uh, it varies week by week, and we make our rankings. We will announce the winners of this week. Next week on the podcast, we will keep score, though. We actually do have a spreadsheet. That's actually This is the one thing that actually is real. We do, in fact, have a spreadsheet. And uh, we tally it up. And then randomly, we'll just announce that the Twitter questions are done, and we will announce who the winners are of them and that so. winner may or may not win anything ask keith ski how that went yeah, last year ask keith ski yep that's right uh, uh before we embark on these questions plum i have to ask you is that a morton salt t-shirt that you're Thank wearing you. over there this is uh, the band guster guster t-shirt they been, they are having a morton salt afternoon who, okay who i, I have been listening to since my days at michigan state where i learned of them I uh, and heard them, in fact, in concert in 2006 on campus. Um, they performed at the Salt Shed in Chicago. And so they had these uh, gimmicky little uh, Morton Salt uh, yes. shirts made. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very good. All right, Mike Mike Jones. Speaking of which. Uh, very good. You're drinking. Oh, look it. And I've got this. Mm. Flying yeah, Ace. So, hey, cheers to cinnamon. Cheers to cinnamon tonight. Kevin? To cinnamon. It's a Sparty party with cinnamon. Oh, bottoms up. Let her rip. All right. For you two, from Mike Jones. We attended a wedding yesterday. My fiance was shit faced after two drinks in the first hour. Our wedding is in four weeks. What <laughs> tips can you give her so she's semi coherent during our wedding? One drink. This is what I learned is one drink one is drink. good. One drink is good. <laughs> False. The bigger tip is eat, eat, you, yeah, bread. E you bread. will find a way to it, the food will leave you. Eat, yeah, yeah. You got to eat. You're not being rude. Eat. eat, eat the food. Yeah. Eat the food. And Squires when you're in that situation, away. they mm -hmm. you got to do pictures and stuff at the time that the guests are having food. So like, have someone grab you a plate. Yep. Last last year uh, at a wedding that I went to in the summer, I was in charge of getting meatballs for the bride, and I just ran up to the front of the line just whenever she needed meatballs. Meatballs were the choice. Don't know why. Interesting. Um, don't read into that too much. But anyway, uh, yes, that is the actual that is the actual uh, um, thing to remember. Next up from Mike Jones, uh, why are roundabouts so hard for people to complete? It's a circle with arrows for F's sake. It's PG-13 family podcast. Uh, why are they challenging for some folks? I don't. This is the question of questions. Uh, for, I don't understand people who complain about roundabouts. It, it is slow processing. I think it is truly a question of uh, nervous drivers, very slow processing, seeing cars coming around the circle and being unable to risk establishing themselves in the lane with enough speed and trust that in fact they're not going to get slammed into and so i think I it's just a question of processing yield signs in the world uh, people encounter a yield sign and they're not sure what to do with that information mm -hmm. number two is stop at a yield sign mm -hmm. yeah like yeah. It, or like, even slow down way down like that's not how the yield sign works mm -hmm. it's stop yeah. if someone's there if not go roll on through yeah yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. go but Truly, on the other side, sometimes you have people that are like, there is no stop sign here. I'm going to go fly right over this circular median right. thing. Also Just a bat out of hell on this. Not good. Which is its good. own set of yeah. issues. Damages so, the suspension. Yeah. Not supposed to do it. 
Next up, Spurtine, 18770. Why did uh, Nick Saban recommend Mel Tucker to MSU? Does Saban hate us that much? Uh, This is new to me. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, so I I think we can take it on pretty good authority that Saban does not indeed hate MSU. And in fact... Right, that's true. We can agree on that. White likes MSU... uh, to the point that I believe he told Alan Haller, like, if I was younger, I would have come back. Yeah. Um, that, like, at Alabama would have come back if he was younger. Yeah. But I, I'll, I'll ask this to you guys because uh, this is a fun little game we play where we take things Graham says and then react to them. But uh, Graham's been positing the theory that if the college landscape had not changed so drastically— that Mel Tucker might have actually been quite successful at MSU. The goats, the cars, all that stuff. Like, that if if NIL had not come to be under Mel Tucker, which mm. when he was hired, it had not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we think, because he did, his classes, albeit small, were exclusively higher-end ranked talent. Yeah, he just could. Yeah, but no, I mean, it's a good question. At the same time, his biggest successes relied on the portal. So Kenneth Walker comes in and is why he got that massive contract. I think that's fair to say at this point. Right. Good good scheduling that year and Kenneth Walker. But his his classes were so small because he had so many four and five stars on campus, and then they ended up just ditching MSU at the end. Do you think the other four? But for NIL inducement, some of those players would have picked MSU. Probably they would have, but they didn't. And he decided to jack off on the phone with the rape survivor. So here we are. Oh, yeah, there's that, too. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah. And that mm-hmm. is Graham Next up. NIL's fault is and what you're you go, saying. Graham. Yeah. Blame, yep. blame. Speaking of which, Graham. we heard you. Hot dogs are we next. We heard you loud and clear. Uh, Spartan 18770 asks, will we ever get an answer to why hot dogs come 10 to a pack while buns come eight to a pack, Michael? No. Yeah. It's, it's not it's It isn't. It's so cool. Someone yeah. needs to look into that for some antitrust collusion related activities. Um, yeah. Next up from Spartan 18770. Uh, how many times this summer do you think I can get away with calling in sick every Friday? Alex Plum as a manager of a large of organization. Managers. I can tell you yeah. the answer to this question. Yeah, well, I don't know your company's policies. It's probably uh, as many times as you have a PTO, unless your organization has a uh, policy where call-ins accrue some level of points if it's not pre-approved vacation time. In I'm which unlimited, case so answer, it, pretend you're unlimited, because then it's, there's unlimited is not unlimited, if we're being okay. very honest. In mm-hmm. fact, it's more limited than <laughs> stated. And, well, and the point that my manager's you like, the, you need to take time off. And I'm like, but shame. Yeah, well, if it's unlimited by policy, it's in fact unlimited. And while they can make your life hell on any number of ways, you may not get promotions. You may, there may be other things. They can't fire you for it. Uh, and as we all know, or at least I know, it is a very, 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 very difficult, though not impossible to fire people for performance. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of documentation. And most of the point, that documentation has to be consistent across all employees. So if you're being documented for poor performance, you have to be able to demonstrate that anyone else who did the same or not as much of the same, et cetera, as you has been documented as well. And that becomes very, 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 very difficult for employers to prove in court to EEOC. So a lot of people get the jobs back. Anyway, there you go. Next up from Beth Morrow. You read this because I love Beth. Uh We'll send this to Plum. Uh, and also because it's a good one. It's a Tony Harding reference. Uh, Soup and Counter Stall- Stallions is no longer available. Who's the next best secret weapon U of M could deploy to guarantee success? P.S. Convince me it's not not Jeff Galuli. <laughs> it is Jeff Galuli, Beth. Oh, my God. Oh, you guys. The rest of these Twitter questions better hope that I'm not scoring this week because this is a, <laughs> this is a fan favorite. An old Jeff Maybe. Galuli reference is quite right up my alley maybe this week we should put a random number generator together and just assign and you might get repeated every single week but it's like true. it's true that's who has to score that week that's with a great, approval that, with approval oh, of course with approval yeah 
Uh, no, I think the answer here, I think the, the next best secret weapon after Connor Stallions is any of uh, uh, any of Jim Harbaugh's uh, khakis that he's left behind. Uh, mm. Just those dockers. They can stand on their own. Very, very starchy. If seen, uh, that would be very problematic and confusing to everybody and could be disruptive enough to achieve some advantage. And the key to the other team signals is actually stitched into the pleats. You can just <laughs> open them up and you can get a view Here of what are. the other team signals are. Yep. Um, I would say that Bruno Kirby is actually who they should hire, though. Anyway, next up from Jason Fry. Now that you guys are consistently podcasting in video format, would you prefer to watch Henry Fonda picking blueberries or Alex Plum ironing clothes whilst wearing a kimono? I know the answer to this one. I haven't even done it on the pod yet. And I, I, I since we've been, I've not ironed yet since we've been recording. And by the way, and pray to a God. pile of clothes waiting to be ironed. He's That's rushing through these ironed. questions to get they're to them. They're in a pile. Just put them on a hanger while they're a little bit damp. There's no need for, for ironing at that point. None, what of, are none you of doing? that's true. None of that's true. No. Well, none of that's you're true. missing the opportunity. And the point here is that they're damp for Greg because that's cheaper. Uh-huh. I know that. But it's, that's true. It, it's yeah. uh, linen. Linen can, you just can't get it. You can't get a wrinkle on the linen. linen. You can't. <laughs> Your you linen can't do shirts it. that you wear in the office every day. Next <laughs> up from, from Vermos Dutch. What annual is this? Third? No, I think it's four. I think it's four. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Time, You're on your five. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> and we started in the fall. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have to be four. I think we I think started it the first summer. Because the winners have been Upper Deck Jerk Guy. Yep. Um, Did he win? I think so. I think he won Why the first one. Why are you getting Mac Bubbles? Because this is the bubble. Because this is the, from the thing. I got to go. I thought I went and turned that off. Go on YouTube to figure out what we're talking about. Um, and then who else won? Uh, Keith Ski won. And Sharp, Sharp did Sharpert win? Yeah, I think Sharpert won. Sharpert won. Is that it? I think that's it. This is no, uh, no, we've got one more. Did Raymond Chains win? I think Raymond Chains has been second multiple times. I think this is the bane of his existence. Um, we could look. We could find the score oh, sheets. John Hubbard won one yes. year. Yeah, John, John Hubbard in a while. Win. So this is your five, is what we're learning. Wow, we must have done them like a couple times in different seasons. Oh uh, yeah, I think maybe we had two year one. Yep. 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 I think that's it. Okay. Uh, next. Yeah, next up ahead. from the key ski, our reigning champion. Uh, you have to live off the grid in a cabin for a month. Is your roommate Izzo or D'Antonio? It's I, gotta be Izzo. In, unless he can bring an accordion. If he can bring an accordion, then I'm it's taking D'Antonio. Definitely Izzo then. No. That's so much music. He could teach you how to play the accordion. That would be amazing. What a skill set. We have different what life skill values. Set? Imagine. Imagine Shameful. how much better your life would be going back into, in, into your regular life, but with an, accor with an accordion, Michael. That would be great. That would be great. Accordion. Uh, Michael, this one's for you because Greg can answer food-related questions. Uh, the Keithsky asks, would you rather eat only at Crunchy's or Ella's Taco? And I think I know the answer for you for the rest of your life. So, I love Mexican food. Mm -hmm. Crunchies. So I know, yeah. yes. So yeah. that's why you choose crunchies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. El Azteco is ass. <laughs> yeah, you go there for the margaritas. That is, the margaritas that's, in the rooftop. Yeah. That is for Dos sure. Well, Dos and Dos and like, if, if, if the roof of your mouth is feeling too whole and unblemished, if you're sort of like... <laughs> God, I really would like some razor blades to just dig into the fucking soft palate I, there that I have on the top of my mouth. I don't understand how the food can both be bland and cold <laughs> with regularity. Like, holy. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's Finally, like Mexican food with ranch. Sorry. The, anyway. The, the Kieski for you, Grooch. What are you drinking? Uh, well, for me, it's an athletic <laughs> brewing company because we're trying to steal that sponsorship from someone else who might have it uh, this upcoming football season. Uh, so we're making good. moves uh, on good. that. Also, well do you keep an again. eye on 
Well, do keep an eye on Lockdown Spartans this week for one reason or another. Who could who could ever know? Um, you didn't even tell but, us. Uh, wow. Oh my God. Listen, what some a... of us. Some of us. Um, could what, be was asking, what was that word? What was that word? I'm just going to say, uh, cream rises to the top. So I'm trying to distract from the hateful rhetoric of one Mike Jones, trying to use that is. word in such a derogatory, hateful, spiteful way. That's it. Um, but uh, anyway, next up from Joe Ashworth, you've been hired to consult for the amorphous body of student athletes from Revenue Sports. Their goal is to maximize their share of revenue and influence over a variety of priorities, not unlike a union. How do you advise they get organized, and what is their next move? Strike. You got to strike. Strike. Probably. What would a college football team do, truly, if yeah, I don't know the, the players went on strike? So, I'm sorry, is the question for a team, or... Uh, I'm going to assume... I think it's for student-athletes generally. Okay. The amorphous great. body of student-athletes from revenue sports. Yeah. I mean, I I would argue, though, that there's even a tension within revenue sports, by the way. Um, but, yeah, I think you advocate for a strike, and I think if you're actually the schools, you say, great. Do it. I actually don't think they should be afraid of a, C a CBA. I think that's to their benefit in the long run. The, the, the schools? schools? Yeah. I, I actually yeah. think that if, if, if they say, fine, college sports is done. We're not mm -hmm. doing this anymore. Great. You're on strike. Like, then they can get the congressional action they need. I, mm. I think this is it, this is a benefit a benefit for everybody. Not the least of which, by the way, is the non rev athletes who who Congress will not leave out from a protection standpoint. Mm -hmm. They passed Title IX. They're not going to forget about them. Yeah. So at this point, it does benefit the university substantially to have a, a but they a can't body lock them out, right? With. Like they need a strike. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next up from Joe Ashworth, Transfer Portal is open. Which non-MSU pod is each host and listener guest going to? Ooh. Well, I've already mm. made my announcement for this week. No, Non-MSU. Oh. Well, maybe he'll be locked on something else this week. I don't know. Oh, um, Wolverine. Sounds... You absolute... <laughs> Get out, Greg. <laughs> Chode. Uh, well, we, here's the really sad thing. We can't choose InfoWars because apparently the set has been uh, taken by the federal government this week. <laughs> so it could just be you and Alex Jones on like a street corner recording. And, <laughs> and Alex Jones. This is a delightful oh, clip. And leaving me out. Wow. Still. Well, still on the wow. third wheel. Always. Go. Never not. Uh, Next. Do you guys have answers gonna, to this? Or I'm going to go. Uh, how did this get made? If that there, there's a podcast, oh, podcast I could go on, it would be that one. Okay. So I go Next on the from with Marco Werman. It's a good the world. Is that a podcast or is that a radio show? It's a podcast too. I mean, he, oh, they do both. Oh, they, oh, so it's a radio show you can digest via podcast. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Joe Rogan for Alex Plum. <laughs> God, that'd be actually good. <laughs> oh my god it'd be delightful i would watch the shit out of that yeah, episode it would you would get so upset with the way that that you don't speak directly into the microphone yes like, yes this would come up every time yes it would but yeah, he'd be the, bothered by that. i question your endurance because he goes for like five plus hours right yeah that's mm -hmm. on that's, and you, you know are, i can barely you are I tapping can... out right now uh-huh uh-huh it's close <laughs> right yeah. now right uh, now is when we're tapping out there's a yep, lot of out. tapping out earlier. Uh, anyway, next from Kate Wall. Uh, happy Pride to everyone's favorite listener guest. Oh, Thank my you, gosh. Kate. Wow, the only one. Golly, I got to score her Wait, higher. I wish you had it up before we started recording, you douchebags. No, it didn't count. I didn't mention it. wasn't it. sincere. Oh, you're right. I'm I didn't sorry. mention it because I don't need to. I've got the I'm card. I'm an ally. I'm an ally. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's I just right. want you to know. Yeah, I say, right. Alex, happy Pride. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next up from Kate Wall, uh, what is it about tight ends that makes them wait, a wait, 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 wait. We're, we're, we're gonna pass over her pandering to the off chance that Alex Plum is grading this week. Okay, hold on. The pandering wasn't in the first one, the pandering was in the second question. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry, Greg, go ahead. What is it about tight ends that makes them joyful doofuses like golden retrievers? I've added that. That's editorializing. Uh, mm. Is it just the people attracted to that position that are half offensive linemen, half pass catching juggernauts? See Gronk, Kelsey, uh, scared text and photo attached. Sacred. Sacred. Sorry. Uh, I was going down here. So typical QB tweet. Love my teammates. God is good. RB tweet. Keep grinding. TE tweet. Dark wide receiver tweet. <laughs> Uh, the enemy speaks kindly and holds a knife. <laughs> uh, anytime we can uh, talk about tight ends in Pride Month, though, is right on. Yeah, it did that right was well money. well paired there, yep. Kate Wall. Well yep, paired. Well done, you. Well done. Um, you. What do we have an answer to this before we move on, Dolly? No, I mean it's just it's a funny observation, and it is a hundred percent true. They are very very dumb for no reason. They get, also the get smartest football flavor. Sure. Like the amount that a tight end has to know is that's it though. A lot. Well, that's yeah, where mean, all of their brain goes. Then they have very little left for social interactions or managing social cues, etc. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next up, Ali, Kevin Greck in the event climate change forces us into cannibalism. Which of the three of you is most delicious and why is it Jonesy? Now he's gamey right now. It's definitely plum. Plum is the yeah. most delicious one. Yeah. 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 Look at yep. it. I start with yep. the I start with the uh with the mustache and nibble mm -hmm. nibble that away first. Yep. It's in the like name, when a chimpanzee it's in the name. I'm when, very when sweet. <laughs> chimpanzee like Juicy attacks even. a human. It's like uh -huh. the mouth and cheeks go first. Go so, first. Yeah. Start with the plums How myself. Range is oh Lord Jesus. All right, and uh, Michael, for you from Ali, what drinks would you pair with yourselves? I this is upsetting. A Chianti and some fava beans. Is that there what we're it going is. with this? That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well done, you. Very well done. Very I hear well that done. noise though, and all I, I I see is Dwight in the office mm. uh, when he rips the uh, the CPR mask off. That's good. Right. <laughs> That's good. Uh, next up, Thomas Zambiasi. Uh, who do I have to bribe with my vast personal wealth to get some soft parade shandy in the Spartan Stadium concessions? It's a good question, though, frankly. And I, I'll tell you why they're not going to do it. That shit hits you hard. Well, I don't know about the shandy, mm. but soft, just regular soft parade has fucked me up more times than I wish to recount. The shandy, I can't imagine, goes too far behind it because it's so laden with sugar. So it may just be for our safety. I don't know. Yeah, public Probably. health type of thing. Public health thing, yep. yep. For your health with Alex Plum. Mm. Next uh, up. Rec, now this is for you, Kevin. It's good. It's okay. Good. What's your go-to for breakfast at a restaurant? At a, at a restaurant? <clears throat> this is going to astonish you. But I go into the, <laughs> into the cheapest column and yeah, I choose great. whatever I can from toast and eggs. Or I go for broke and chickens and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Those are the two. It's do I feel saucy, chicken and waffles, or am I trying to get out of here for less than five dollars? Eggs and toast. Unbuttered. Those are the toast. two that I go to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Definitely. Yep. That's good. And if you if you leave jam at the table, yeah, that that's not getting open. There's no way. Zero percent chance. What? It's free though. I would have thought no. you'd been like maximize those calories. <laughs> no, because I don't care. I don't. Want, it's too. It's overwhelming to my palate. I don't yeah. need it. And God, you know, the little, the little carrier, it has so many flavors, orange marmalade, mixed berry, whatever the fuck kind of berry that is. There's a lot, too many in many respects, even for me. Uh, yeah. Speaking of being cheap, I've taken to bringing home the tea bags from hotel rooms. Um, oh, and boy. Oh, most, that's, this has been going <laughs> well, on for a you while. You need to watch for Plum's reaction to this. <laughs> it's been going on for a while. Uh, just recently, I stayed at a hotel that offered uh, free microwave popcorn. I'm embarrassed there was a microwave. by you. <laughs> and I also lifted that. You better believe that came home with me. And it's sitting in my backpack right here right now. Hold on. I can do this. Don't do we it. We can do this live don't, on the podcast. Please don't do it. No, I don't think it's good. Where is I it? Think it's it's in here somewhere. It. I promise you. This is oh, not worth it. It's in here somewhere. Maybe uh, it I think it's this bag. bag. Oh. All right. Well. I found oh, it. Kirkland no. signature. 
Oh, this wow. came from a hotel. Actually, respect respect on the Kirkland. <laughs> yeah, only on the Kirkland though. Yeah, and if if that was the reason why you nabbed it, then then that's probably fine. It's a factor. Yeah, uh, it, upset, it was the lowest of the factors. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was not high. Next up, <laughs> Carl, you do too much, bro. Uh, Jonesy, is it disappointing that Franklin may ultimately get fired for his fraudulent medical expertise rather than his fraudulent oh, coaching? Oh, this could have been off Grand River. Oh, huge mistake. Uh, it it was, uh, for those of us who outline, uh, it was not a mistake. I left this here on purpose. We had a lot to talk about with House settlement, so... Oh, there he is, defending his fucking decisions. Just answer the question, you shh, charlatan. Well, if someone's going to call it a mistake. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's... So, for those who don't know, James Franklin was part of a lawsuit by a former Penn State doctor who alleged that James Franklin interfered with the metal, medical diagnoses of several players, including a self-harm diagnosis, uh, and... The doctor won millions of dollars as a consequence of that lawsuit. Um, yeah, <sighs> this I'm actually a little surprised that Penn State has not taken action on this already, mm -hmm. which leads me to believe that there will not be consequences for James Franklin. Correct. Correct. But uh, honestly, this is in the realm of things that coaches should be held accountable for in a, in a big should way. Should be. Yeah. And, and like it, and Penn State I don't think has a particularly large excuse here. That mm. that this is the kind of thing that you would suspect you could fire someone for cause. Now, do remember though, listeners, that Penn State signed James Franklin to a brand spanking new contract the same time as Mel Tucker under the same circumstances. So I don't know what their language is as it relates to firing for cause, but this feels like it should be in the ballpark. Yep. And uh, though I would ask you both, is that a $70 million reason to fire somebody? Uh, I mean, I, to my thinking, he should have just been required. The punishment I would mete out would be you, you're going to, you are paying out of your salary, the amount that we've settled or whatever the award was, the university had to pay to sure. this physician. Frankly, I'm a little surprised because I don't know what the injury was to the physician. Um, I, I mean, the, the only, the only injury that I can gather would be risk to their medical licensure or some, somehow or if you quantifiable by a patient. Well, correct, but again, that but the physician would never pay that. Their medical malpractice insurance would pay that out. So then it would be in the form of increased premium. So again, I go back to what's. I, I'm very surprised the jury got to five plus million dollar damages on to a physician who I, I I truly could not even begin to ascertain what the damage. Sorry, was this awarded uh, he was to him or was this? Yeah, he was. Fi he was. Uh, oh, the physician fired. was fired following a conflict oh, with James Franklin. That's fine. Then that's wrongful termination. Hmm. I got you. I got you now. Thank you. I was so confused. He was served as the orthopedic surgeon uh, and Penn State's direct director of athletic medicine since 2014. Oh, yes. No, yeah. Before that's... he was dismissed in 2019. No, 100%. I mean, I, I would say like, oh, yeah, we're not going to fire you for that. We like what you're doing. You're doing great things. We've just upped your contract. You are paying all $5.2 million of that out of your salary. This year, we're not prorating it over the next X of your contract. It's coming out this year. <laughs> you dumb idiot. You won't do that again. And I would accept if I, if I was Franklin, I'd be like, mm -hmm, okay, agreed, easy. Yeah, so. apparently uh, both Penn State and Franklin were dismissed in the as defendants in 2020 due to the statute of limitations. Um, so anyway, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this is exhibit infinity. Of, yeah, there are things that schools will use to get rid of you if they want to. Yeah, but if they don't, they'll find they a way won't. to keep you. Yep. That's it. Next up from Jaber, uh, would Yudei Hussein's desk be stylish repurposed as a wall background for Zoom calls? What? Yeah, would it, would it, would it, I don't know what it looks like, but Uday Hussein has a desk. And if it, would it be stylish to, to basically, would it be stylish to repurpose? Uh, uh, I, as a wall so I've, I've looked at his desk and I believe he's making fun of my wall. But, ah, two esoteric joke, Jerbear. Well done. Two so, esoteric, but still cutting. 
also Jerbert, uh, that desk is living in drop ceiling. Like that looks like the set of the office. Oh uh, yeah. Please, please. And Jared. in fact, it seems that the office made a joke about this. Mm. Yeah, Dwight mm. made a replica of that desk. Um so very good though. Very good. Very good know, reference. And last up from Jer Bear, uh Sounds a sensitive. Snifi or Case Hall uh for better dining hall. All right, so mm. I think we can agree that it's gotta be from when we were students. Yeah, no, no. So so the answer is Snifi. Yeah. And 100%. Case was for those who were around during our time, which I think a number of our listeners were, were if you went to Case, you were getting some version of chicken, yep, fried, another gem. version of chicken, yeah, and then a third chicken. Well, sometimes sometimes the uh, fish, sometimes you would get the orange fish, Lent, but it's fine. Um, it, yeah, it was... I, I can't sit here during this presidential chicken slander and just let this go on. Okay, I oh must. My God. Flex my food bona fides in Ooh. defense of presidential, presidential chicken. chicken and brandish against you. No, please don't show the popcorn. Signature please, popcorn. please don't show the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so discouraging. It just there, I, never have I ever seen you do something so beta as stealing mm -hmm. Kirkland, Kirkland popcorn. Hotel popcorn. My lord. It, it just happens it, like you're out the door. You're just like, ha yoink. <laughs> a, a hotel, by the way, that was like, uh, what are we going to do? Run to Costco and get something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What hotel was that you were staying at? He this was a little us. mom and pop shop in uh, yeah. Salt Lake City. Yeah. So. Next nice. up. So anyway, it's Sci-Fi. And I don't know that that's true right now. I mean, My I understanding is case, case is fantastic is now. Yep. But like. It was yeah. chicken and chicken and, and yeah. chicken. And chicken, that's right. And it was because of the, the athletes. Like we Correct, know. yes. Get those kids with a lot of calories. All they need is calories. Just get them the calories. And protein, protein, a lot protein. Of protein. Protein, yep. 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 Uh, next up, Pepe Plum. Uh, what if we had to list our schools in the transfer portal? If I had known that my ex visited at least six schools while we were married, I could have pulled her NIL offer much sooner. <laughs> Also, am I wrong for showing my kids her husband's mugshot each time he gets arrested and tased? Okay, there's a lot <laughs> going on here. It's a lot of questions, Pepe. She got a lot of fucking questions there. Six is a lot. It's like prolific at that point. It's yeah, and... yeah. Your ex has got some real problems. I, I think we can all agree on that one. Um... <laughs> and also, Pepe. Um... <sighs> You are happy now, right? You are? Yeah, follow up with that next week, please. Yeah, let us know. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know what your therapist told you, to, how, how your therapist told us to, an, told just, you to answer us. I'm just us. saying you, 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 seem, you found a wonderful dental hygienist, right? We're told. Um, we're it's told. Been implied. And, um, and we're excited for you about that. And you're, you're the, the mugshot? I got questions about that. I don't know that that's wise. I'm concerned that he gets tased every time he gets arrested. Yeah, like, that's the other question here is, my guy, is your heart strong enough for that? You know, yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you're not coming back. It seems like after one or two, you would just be like, I know where this is I, going. Yeah, all right, I mean, let's get in the car. All right. Yeah. All right. Next, next up, up Pepe Plum. Oh, good. Good. Oh, he's Go just now getting to the rant of the week. My Lord and my God. <laughs> Windows-based computers, what happened? Can we bring XP back? New That's Windows works as well as Greg's uh, <laughs> Chartrisk Internet. The Internet wasn't the problem. Thank you very much. A.K.A. the digital dam of Internet. Chartrisk. Mm -hmm. um, Greg's Charter microphone is, and yeah. Charter. is Charter. as easy to understand as my typing, and we are both better than Horst and the new U of M player. Wow, he referred mm. to your your internet as Horstian. That's upsetting. Horstian and Charteresque and Horstian. Could yeah. use capitalization there on Charteresque. Yeah. Um, next up from mm -hmm. Mamopoli, MSU professor Felicia Wu was appointed oh. to the WHO's risk assessment technical group. 
which will set global dietary guidelines based on evidence of food and nutrients contributing to optimal health versus chronic disease. Which could you readily reduce in your diet, sugar or salt? I got this because I want to ask Plum a question as the public health man here. Yes, it's, as the it's guy wearing just, a salt shirt. I, I already know what you're gonna. I, I already know what you're gonna ask, and the answer is correct. You don't say the WHO. You just say WHO. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was wrong mm-hmm. on that. That's right. Uh, so it seems to me that one of those two things is more necessary for bodily function than the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one of those two things um, has become a bit of a boogeyman Mm. over the years. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Sugar seems like the bad guy and the one that can be avoided. Salt is necessary indeed it's one of the ingredients not the sodium but uh, correct me if i'm wrong salt is part potassium right no sodium chloride oh sorry you're right my bad but anyway okay. salt's good better sugar bad that is true yeah that, that is true unless you have diabetes well i mean unless you have some forms of diabetes in which case you do need a baseline of sugar to sure, maintain but we're talking about people who can't process but insulin otherwise who are generally unique. healthy correct who are generally healthy yes you should we're be talking reducing about people sh- that matter here sugar should be reducing sugar i will say for folks with hypertension see, th- here's the thing with salt particularly with sodium chloride it is in literally everything and unless you were eating an unprocessed diet if you are not eating an unprocessed diet, unprocessed diet, you don't need to add salt to anything. You're you're getting salt in literally every every processed food that you can eat, from granola bars to Greg's fucking Kirkland <laughs> popcorn. Salt is and added especially. To do you want me to read everything. the nutritional? I don't. Please don't do it. So so if you are so just to general listeners, if you are adding salt to your food, you 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 really could stop doing that, and that would actually go a long way to reducing, especially if you've but and like if you're like anything like me and you have higher blood pressure, you should be not adding salt to anything because you're getting are, it already. There are other ways to reduce blood pressure, though, right? There's a lot of ways to reduce blood pressure uh, for a hundred percent for sure. But if you tried those, if you exercise regularly. If you avoid alcohol before bed, generally, if you get your plenty of sleep, Eliminate if you do sugar. deep breathing, you meditate. Yeah, sugar. sugar's impact on blood on blood pressure is is it, it does have one. It is more indirect than than salts, to be to be sure. Um, but anyway, I, my my point is still yes, absolutely eliminate sugar before salt. But don't think, doctor. I have an advanced degree in healthcare. Draw your own <laughs> conclusions. And I'm a doctor, <laughs> technically. Did oh, you, you know, are. Did you know in Germany they call you doctors? Yeah, I believe that. What? Yeah. But what? In what? You have a doctorate. Why the fuck not? I mean, what, I know but, people but who why, want to be. But co- why? Let, no, no. But I work why? in a healthcare setting, and I know people who have doctorates who want to be called doctor. And I'm like, no, you're not doing it in a healthcare setting in particular. I'd be like, no, absolutely you're not. not. You're, <laughs> you're not one. Sorry about it, <laughs> doctor. All right, uh, Kevin Mamopoli asks when you say. I'm sorry. Do you really mean it? I think she's talking about a recent episode with your with someone important to you. In this mm-hmm. all that is sports lull, what pod statements might you reflect upon? And in your reflective moment, are you truly believable or believable only in your own mind? I, I can say that I definitely get in the habit of saying I'm sorry. And mm. I truly have never meant it in my entire life. Uh, I've never been wrong. I understand yeah. that people around me have taken things that I've said or done the wrong way. They were misinformed. They were incorrect. Oh, I yeah. said, I'm sorry, as a means to get them to just leave me alone and go do something else for a bit. Um, so it's a means to an end for me. But Good. I can assure you that I have never been sorry in my entire life. Yeah, what about you, right. gentlemen? When I said sorry for last week's episode, I I did actually mean that. I refuse to say it unless I mean it. So I don't say it often, but uh, when I do say it, I do mean it. Uh, and and I do think because it, I think actually one of the things that's happened as a consequence of doing this podcast is that um, stopped apologizing for things. Mm. You know, like people might be offended or disagree with something that we've we've said, and mm-hmm. and I'm like, 
okay. Yeah. Get over it. Like, <laughs> fine. Don't listen. You know. Yeah. But yeah. uh, but I I actually did feel bad about last week. That was a yeah. That was a bl- or two two weeks ago. Two weeks, two weeks, ago. weeks ago. Yep. Kevin's yeah. audio. Yep. Uh, next up, Mama Belief. But otherwise, I don't I'm think sorry, we've said guys. sorry before. Have we said sorry? It, and he cracks up. Literally, his audio is cracking up as he said that. As he says we, it. That's good. Have we said sorry bef- besides that? Oh, I'm sure I had to at least four or six times for I any sh- number I'm gonna of... Screen clip, I'm going to screen clip the cold open that you wrote. You should. <laughs> you should, you absolutely homophobic monster on June 2nd. My lord. My god. Next Mr. up, Mr. Neurotic, Neurotic Pants. <laughs> for Michael. For Michael. If the players are now officially pros, as he understands it, the playoffs have expanded, the networks have purchased the soul of the Power Four, then isn't it just a matter of time before the teams play more regular season games? Will we see teams playing conference opponents twice in a year? Why not? Them fucking students won't have to go to school anymore. Mm. Uh, So how many... So the NFL's at 16 regular season games plus playoffs? That sounds right. Yeah, so that's why um, okay. the it, the the body can't handle the toll of all of that. So, oh, the who cares? It's about 17 money. Seventeen regular season private equity games, but they they're they're going to reduce the scholarship cap, like it, or not the I'm sorry, the roster cap, not the scholarship cap. Uh, well, though you might say, well, the NFL has a smaller roster cap than that uh that's fair but they're also professional football players and they have a signed practice squad so i just don't Mm. see it happening um we're we're uh institutions not the least of which is a collective bargaining agreement by which high school players can opt into that cba and then be drafted out of it away from that happening so uh next up from this is to you jonesy so i've got to take it uh oh. jonesy imagine this you're in a jacuzzi on a balmy summer night you may or may not have company i think we know you're enjoying a beer and looking up at the stars when from behind you a smiling crab couch walks up slips into the jacuzzi and asks got room for one more how would you respond i like how he came up behind you yeah that's and then concerning. slipped in I choose to yeah. believe that he slipped in behind you in the jacuzzi, just like created space and displaced you into another part of the jacuzzi. Yes, yeah, can... doing some imagery that I don't care for, if I'm being oh, really honest. Yeah, you should be honest. Uh, but if Graham did all of those things, I'd still say, hey, buddy, good to see you. Uh, and that would be that. Uh, well, I think, and I think, you know, the conceit here in your question, and then we would all talk about how that happened to me. Yeah. Well, Raymond, you didn't tell us whether or not you had the company. You implied you did, but you wouldn't stick it. You got to stick it. If you've got the company and he comes in, well, it could be really more exciting in many ways. And if you don't mm-hmm. have the company, this is your chance to make your move. So Ram. anyway, I think it's just, A lot of upside for me there. A lot of upside. Last up from Raymond, for you, Grook, what, uh, sorry, more enjoy, I made that one up, more enjoyable, leaving Central assed out of revenue and television (laughs) deals or beating them 77 to three in football and 155 in basketball. I like that. Uh, I do like 155 in basketball, but uh, the real joy is leaving them out in the wind uh, for here on out. For all Forever. eternity, that we can look back at yep. this at a game they got trounced in by a bad MSU team, uh, and they never come back to East Lansing again after that. That's the answer. Next up from the Everdeck Jerk Guy, will this year be rigged as well? Like every year, you dumb idiot. Fuck. Yeah. God, obviously. I mean, we, we, we make these convoluted rules to rig it. Duh. Oh, God. Next up from the Everdeck Jerk Guy. Uh, oh, God, his audio. <laughs> It's not failing to me yet. Oh, okay. It's happening to okay. me. Continue. Great. Do you think if Max stayed, Izzo would have his second? <laughs> second what? Coronary? Pulmonary embolism? What do you want? <laughs> he would have killed the guy. Max is inconsistent as, at best. Uh, a Nazi sympathizer at worst. I don't know. Did you see I his brother staying in the, in the draft? Yes, and I hope he fares even worse 
<laughs> even worse than young Matt because he, that, Max because he has the misfortune to be have been born in the same family. That tells me a lot about his parents, by the way. That's Bad what people. that tells me. Yes, is, and 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 poor. They must be poor. They must be not, way over leveraged. Well, yeah. they need to be. They need to be made that well, way. Well, we don't know soon. that they're not way over leveraged. That's a possibility. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, next Gambling. up uh, from the Upper Deck, Upper Deck Jerk Guy, and last up, uh, Greg, which of the three of you should I screen cap with a weird face and make my avatar? Mm. Abby. Do I it. mean, we've all gotten the treatment. <laughs> Plum. I don't know. I mean, that's, is, that's for pride, Upper Deck Jerk Guy. Yes. You have to do Plum. You have to do or, or it's homophobic or, if you do. You it's decide. Or, it's hom- or it's homophobic if you don't. Yes. That was prepared <laughs> for you, Upper Deck Jerk Guy, and you're a homophobe if you don't do it. And that's the yep. answer. So there you go. All right, gentlemen. Wow. In a light week, I think we made a good one. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Go green. Go, go white. <laughs>